So I share really, really easy ways to feel happier right now. Just embracing your sensory perception. Like every anytime there's something meaningful happening, we take out our phone, we text, we video, you know, we post it. Then it's a part of your device, but is that memory a part of you? And when we engage in important moments through our senses, especially smell, smells the most powerful of all of your senses. And because smell is the only sense that triggers a feeling before it triggers a thought. So scent memories stay with you forever. And how do we engage meaningful moments through our body and our senses rather than our digital devices? Just like really simple ideas for what you can do right now to, to be happier and more alive and more present. Welcome to Engage Presents. I'm Engage co-founder and president Jay Golson. In this interview series, I ask Engage talent the most common questions we hear from event planners to help you get to know them and their stories in 15 minutes or less. Thanks for listening. Welcome to another episode of Engage Presents. It is Jake Olson here, and I am joined with a very special guest, David Romanelli. He is an entrepreneur, an Amazon number one bestseller, a wellness innovator, and a seasoned speaker on balance and happiness. David, thanks so much for joining me. I don't want to steal too much of your thunder, so I want to kind of toss it over to you right away. David, just tell us kind of who you are and what kind of takeaways would an audience uh, get after hearing you speak? Thanks so much. Um, so I've written three books and they're inspired by the work that I've done interviewing older adults, people in their 80s, 90s, and 100s. I was in the yoga world for many years. I started the first chain of boutique yoga studios in the early 2000s, kind of before yoga was a thing. And we made yoga really fun, turned up the hip hop music in class, advertised on billboards all over town that said breathe and was like really in that world. And my last surviving grandparent was in an old age home in Los Angeles and I would go and visit her and it was so depressing. Mm -hmm. And I realized like the way that we treat older people in our country is, is really sad. We put them out to pasture in these old age homes. They don't really have a voice in popular culture. And here I was in the yoga world where the 32 year old yoga teacher with a big Instagram following was the source of wisdom. And the 88 year old World War II survivor was dying a lonely death in the old mm. age homes. Started interviewing older people all over the country and would do these events called Drinks with Your Elders, where I'd bring lonely, isolated, old people into the community to share their stories. And I wrote a couple of books about everything that I learned from the oldest and wisest among us. Wow. That, that's really cool. Do you, do you, uh, I, I, this is just kind of, you know, off my top of my head, but do you feel like America's culture has really lost that sense of, of valuing their, their elders in that way? Yeah. It's just so hard to listen because we're all so distracted. We have two minute at attention spans and, you know, we're very impatient. And what I learned is that it, it does require presence and patience and curiosity. But if you have that and you, you can reap their wisdom, which is so rich and, mm -hmm. and so relevant. And so I wrote a couple of books. One was called Happy is the New Healthy. And it was inspired by the oldest lady I met and interviewed. And she was 111. Wow. And her three tips to health and longevity were sex, vodka, and spicy food. <laughs> so, you know, that joie de vivre, I talk a lot about the joie de vivre and like, how do you take <laughs> time to slow down every day and, and really cherish your life and carve out the moments where you're living through your senses instead of through your, you know, your digital devices. Right. And, you know, what, what are the benefits of slowing down a tick or two so you can appreciate the beautiful, funny and delicious moments that are always happening, but sometimes we're just moving too fast and we're too frenzied to actually enjoy them. Well, we're going to kind of get into that. And David, now out of those three, are you, are you, are you, are you enjoying those? Are you put that into practice or what, what what's, what's going on there? Sex, vodka, and spicy food. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say just not the vodka. I prefer, uh, I have a different taste for that, but Maybe. yes, the answer is yes. And I, I need to remember too, because I have a, a busy life with two young children and, you know, I get aggravated like every parent out there and, you know, balancing work and life, parenting, um, health yeah. and finding the time every day to, to just stop and take a breath and, and enjoy it is tricky for everybody. 
Well, I'm talking about taste and kind of enjoying it, stop, stopping it. I hear that you have an optional exotic chocolate tasting as part of your presentation. I've never heard of that. And I, I don't know why you're not being booked everywhere if that's part of your presentation. <laughs> so tell us about that. Yes. Um, so for a lot of years, my good friend started this exotic chocolate company called Vosh Chocolate. And we would do these yoga and chocolate workshops where people would do yoga and then they're super relaxed and they're present and their senses are heightened and they would eat her exotic chocolate creation. So, and the, for, as a speaking engagement, um, people, I think are looking for ways to put this joie de vivre sensibility, you know, have the rubber hit the road. And yeah. so it's just like, if we just take a moment every day for a beautiful moment to savor a sunset, you know, to, to just watch a full moon you know, to look at the starry night. I mean, it sounds good, but like nobody has time for that anymore. A, a delicious moment, you know, how do you slow down? And instead of multitasking when we're eating or rushing through a meal, you know, how do you, how do you eat an exotic piece of chocolate and really savor it? And a funny moment, you know, if we could just find a sense of humor and not take ourselves so se seriously and not squeeze so tight, we all need those reminders and chocolate's the most enjoyable of them all. So that is part of oh, it. Great advice. Great advice there. So <clears throat> David, if if you're talking to an event planner, what what is it like to work with you from a from a pre call standpoint, or on stage, you know, on stage presence, tech, um, all all those kind of logistics? What what is it like to work with David Romanelli? I mean, I I'd like to think I'm easy to work with. Um, you know, my speech I think is a balance. If there's more serious subjects, um, you know, like for instance. I just on a little tangent here, um, I know a lot of people are right now requesting speeches on artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. And I have something, a new book I'm working on, which is called The Low Tech Boom. And how do we empower those uniquely human qualities that you cannot delegate to artificial intelligence, like intuition, mm -hmm. compassion, joy, gratitude? Because I think it's a huge competitive advantage going forward in the world when artificial intelligence is taking millions of jobs. It's an advantage when you're more human and more compassionate. So I yeah. like to think I embody those qualities and I'm really easy to work with. I have a PowerPoint deck. Um, you know, I'm more than happy to um, adjust my topic for the audience. And it's, uh, you know, 45 to an hour with a little bit of Q&A after. So I think it's a great template. It's very engaging. It's a mix of laughter and, you know, there's some emotional moments. I mentioned that my daughter overcame cancer a few years ago. And I talk about that and what I learned about resilience and the, the kind of joy and gratitude that as a father that I feel having gone through that, it's a much more pure joy and gratitude than I ever had before the diagnosis. So that's kind of a tearjerker, but then there's a lot of laughter in, in the speech as well. There you go. Love it. Love, love it. And <clears throat> speaking of AI too, David, um, we noticed based on our uh, on just our platform that you added a new presentation uh, called Trust and Boundaries in the Age of AI. So, um, you know, you can speak to speak to that because that is a that is a topic that is popular now. And I can't imagine it going away anytime soon. So kind of speak to, you know, I know you just kind of did. But is, is, is that similar to what that new presentation is about? Yeah, there's a story that kind of inspired it where we have these driverless Ubers in Phoenix, where I live. They're called Waymo. And <laughs> We went in with my whole family into a driverless Uber, super high tech, sleek, you know, really cool. And the first turn it, it made was into wrong way traffic. So oh, no. and with my little kids in the car and we're going against the traffic and it's it was very scary. Oh, There's my God. Driver. <laughs> and so it was kind of like a reckoning to realize that technology is amazing and it makes all of our lives really convenient. But you know, can't do everything. And I think no. we need to have boundaries um, between our technology and our humanity. And I think those boundaries are really blurry for everybody, myself, especially. And it's an important conversation to, to define your humanity and to embolden your humanity in the face of all these gadgets and devices and social media platforms. <clears throat> no, that's a very important. Um, David, just real quick, would you rather have had me drive that car or the tech drive that car at that point? <laughs> and your story, your story inspires me and, and I'm going to trust you because you inspire me. So I'm going to follow and trust my my inspiration. There you go. Hey, I, lo I love that. All right. Last, last question here, David. 
And that is just what is what is some powerful feedback or maybe perhaps your favorite feedback to get from audience members after after a speech when they come up to you and meet you? I mean, I think everybody wants to feel happiness. And what I talk about in the speech is that I don't think people are as happy as they feel that they could be. Mm-hmm. And there's always like, it feels like there's more room for more joy, but we just don't know how to get there. And so I share really, really easy ways to feel happier right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, just like just embracing your sensory perception. Like every, anytime there's something meaningful happening, we take out our phone, we text, we video, you know, we post it. Then it's a part of your device, but is that memory a part of you? And when we engage right. in important moments through our senses, especially smell, smell is the most powerful of all of your senses. And because smell is the only sense that triggers a feeling before it triggers a thought. So scent memories stay with you forever. And how do we engage meaningful moments through our body and our senses rather than our digital devices, just like really simple ideas for what you can do right now to, to be happier and more alive and more present. Well, I think that's advice we should all take and, and practices we should, we should all put into practice. Um, but love, love to hear that, David. Thank you again so much for just sharing a little bit about what you speak on and um, your experiences in life and uh, especially sharing with me about your your daughter's um, diagnosis and battle there and congratulations for you guys to get through that and learning from that and wishing you the best as you move on. So thanks so much for joining us today, David. Thank you, Jake. Really great to share with you. Yeah. If you want to see David's profile, go on listengage.com. And with that, we'll see you next time for another episode of Engage Presents. Mm-hmm.